Can Alabama do bourbon? I suppose that's a good question, as any. I mean, uh, there's a lot of places that have proved they can do bourbon pretty well. I mean, there's bourbon coming out of Texas these days. There's bourbon coming out of Georgia these days that are blowing people away. I mean, the South is known for its heat and farming. So, uh, well, we've got Detling. Detling, Detling, Detling. I'm going to call it Detling. I don't know. I like the extra syllable in there. It makes it feel a little bit more posh, I guess. Detling. So I've not even heard of this distillery, but a friend of mine named Matt sent in the sample. He says, hey, gotta check these people out. Craft distiller, family run uh, operation in Alabama, and they do a lot of the farming side of things themselves as well. So a lot of times you get these brands that just pop up and they're like, well, I wanna get into whiskey, so I'm gonna buy somebody else's whiskey. They're gonna do, uh, you know, somebody else did the farming, somebody else did the distilling, somebody else is doing the aging. I'm just gonna buy a barrel, bottle it, and call it something else. This is not that. This is, hey, we want to, uh, we started out as farmers. We know our grains. We're passionate about the, uh, you know, the grains that we raise here on our property. I think we want to distill it. And then they're taking the next step. So that's what deadling is. And this is the cask strength, 116.5 proof. Thank you, Matt, for sending this in to me. I appreciate it. We're going to try it out. We're going to see if Alabama can do bourbon whiskey. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to pour the whole thing. I got to man the grill in about 20 minutes. So I may as well have a pour of something while I'm doing it. This is Deadling Cask Strength Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is at least four years old. They say on the website that they pull these barrels from the upper floors of the warehouse. Those are the ones that experience the most heat, right? Heat rises and we're in the south. So this is gonna be similar, I think, to Texas whiskey in the sense that you got places like Still Austin. They're like, our bourbon's ready in two years. I mean, it's hot. So it's making those trips in and out of the barrel super fast. <laughs> so we got to pull it out of that barrel ASAP before it turns to syrup. So this is kind of a similar thing. They say it's at least four years old. I don't imagine it's going to be much older than that. Right at 116 proof, they're probably pulling it pretty close to four years. Uh, you know, just so they don't have to put the age statement on it would be my guess. But we shall see. I got to say, it is really dark in color. Look how dark that is. It's a real mahogany. You know, sometimes you get like a copper color, caramel colors on whiskeys. This is really that dark mahogany color. So they know that they're really passionate about, you know, the grains that they raise, really a grain to glass, kind of a, a craft distiller. So I always appreciate that. One thing that's interesting to me though, is they said the majority of the, the grains in here are, you know, the corn that's raised there in Alabama, which is why it's bourbon, but they have other flavoring grains they refer to. They say um, our flavor grains come from the craft beer and baking worlds. We use grains from Germany, Chile, USA, and Canada. So that's kind of interesting. I'd be interested to know exactly what kind of a mash bill we got on this, but they don't disclose the mash bill on the website. Only that it's bourbon, which means it's at least 51% corn. Let's get in here and nose this thing, yeah? It is a very grain forward nose. Smells like dusty barn air, which is, I mean, that may sound like a bad note. It's not. It is definitely not. You know, I, I've shared this before. Uh, I grew up in farm country, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis, the north side of Indianapolis. So I was like in the city, but then a lot of my, since I was right on the edge of it, a lot of my friends were actually in farming communities. So, you know, a lot of times I'd go to church in the morning. I'd go home with some of friends of mine. My parents would be like, hey, we'll pick you up later in the day. And I would go back out of the city to a farm and I'd do like some errands, you know, some basic farmhand chores, spread manure, all that kind of stuff. Even cleaning out the hooves, the son of the animals, that's a thing, that's a thing you gotta do sometimes. So a lot of my Sunday afternoons were spent in dusty barns playing hide and seek, cops and robbers, all that stuff. So when I say this smell reminds me on the nose of a dusty barn, I do not mean that as a bad thing at all. Also reminds me of like sweet potato casserole, I think of even pecan pie on the nose. A lot of the notes I'm getting off of this, like not necessarily the dusty barn quality, but those other notes, the sweet potatoes, the pecans, that stuff is stuff that I often attribute with something like um, OCD number five, which is right there on the shelf. That's a great bottle too. A lot of people are big fans of that one. I'm getting a lot of similar notes out of this on the nose. Let's get in there and let's try it, all right? Cheers. Man, it's like a grain sandwich. It's really grain forward. Like the first thing that hits my palate, you know, those stewed corn notes, a lot of those loose, dusty grain notes you get when you're close to a silo. In the middle there, that's where I'm getting this really fun, playful, uh, bit of a dichotomy here between sweet and savory. Now, I love a sweet and savory combination, sweet and salty especially. This is my favorite 
flavor profiles in dishes, especially snacks. And this right there in the middle of that palette has this nice sweet and savory kind of a note, which is why I, I refer to like the sweet potato casserole or pecan pie, you know, something that's a little bit nutty, a little bit savory, even like bacon fatty, but it's playful with things like brown sugar and streusel notes, the vanilla and the, the sort of crumble on top of some of those casserole dishes. That's great. But then, like I said, it's a grain sandwich. The finish, I don't get a lot of like oak on the finish, like I kind of expected to. It's really a, a, a like stewed corn finish. It's very grain heavy on the finish. Those dusty notes coming back around on the finish. Yeah. This tastes a little bit Southern redneck in all the right ways. I actually really like this. Only drawback though, I like this a lot. The only drawback, you're looking at about $110 to $120 for one of these bottles. I've seen them on Sealbox. You, know, you can order them online depending on the state that you're in. So you're probably gonna have to pay a bit of a premium for this product. It is cask strength. So at that price point, it is kind of tough because it's a really competitive price point where you're going to start getting into territories where you got bottles that are really good. I mean, you pay less money for something like a Rio. You pay less money for literally the full small lot series from uh, Redwood Empire. A lot of heritage, uh, you know, distillers have great products under that price point. So 110 to 120 bucks for this for something that's four years old. That's a tall order. But the other side of it is that it's not like you can argue with the price point because you have to understand like craft distilleries, they have uh, a much bigger challenge when it comes to pricing their product because it's a lot of work. It really is, especially if you're doing grain to glass, you're doing some of the farming and plus you're buying extra grains for flavoring purposes. There's a lot of investment up front for your product. So you do have to put a bigger price tag on it just so you make money on the product. So it definitely makes sense in that regard. So you could always like start with something else, like maybe their bottle and bond or just standard expressions and see how you like their profile. Get introduced to their profile first before you go buying something like a cask strength bottle from them. But I gotta say, I'm impressed by this. This is really good. If I'm just th talking about the way the whiskey tastes alone and nothing else, I like this a lot. I'd be more than happy to have this on my shelf and sip this on a regular basis for sure. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the Craft Distillery Rock Filter, which I think is, I mean, they're phenomenal. I love it. Very grain forward. And so it reminds me of that in a lot of ways. But if I'm going to give this a score per my scale, you know, I think the only knock has got to be the price tag, just because it is not cheap to like get into one of these bottles. But it's a great flavor profile on its own, and you'd be more than welcome to try something a little bit cheaper. Just get introduced to their profile before you go and spend the money on something like this. But given it a score on my scale, I think I'm going to have to come in at about like a probably that 7.8 range, which is, which is really good. I mean, that's pushing into excellent territory, right? I think at the very least, you should give them a shot. If you ever see a bottle of Dettling uh, on the shelf somewhere or you're, you're perusing the internet and you see a bottle somewhere at a decent price, you want to get introduced into their flavor profile, give them a shot. Yeah, check them out. I think uh, this is this has earned them a lot of good favor in, in my eyes. And if I'm going to see a bottle of theirs on a shelf somewhere, I'll probably be more inclined to pick it up just because just I already had this sip and really enjoyed it. Thanks again, Matt, for sending this in to me. I appreciate it. Very kind of you, brother. Hey, if you enjoyed the video today, let me know by leaving a like on the video. It's the best free way to support the content here on YouTube. And feel free to get involved in our Patreon or Discord groups. The Discord totally free. Hop in there. we got a lot of great folks in there and uh, sharing the responsibilities. A lot of times we're like telling each other what we're looking for. So it makes bourbon hunting a lot more easier because someone might find the bottle you're looking for and you might find the bottle someone else is looking for. And they can do the swap. It's perfect. And feel free to check out the Patreon. Uh, link is in the description as well. You can join for as little as a buck a month and support the channel by funding the bottles we get to pick up and review right here on YouTube. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.